Hello, this is Mrs. Heisenbuttle, and today we are going to make our uh, twisty slide, our uh, spiral slide. So first thing we need is a standard IPT or standard part file. And we're going to give it a second to warm up because it hasn't uh, opened one of those in a couple of minutes. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to create a line on our standard part file. And the directions say create a line on the y-axis and constrain it to 24 inches. Well the y-axis notice is here and it's going up and down. So I'm going to create a straight line and it likes to be straight and then I'm going to right click done. I'm going to dimension it out to 24 inches. Now that it's at 24 inches, I'm not going to zoom out so I can see it all that well. I just basically need to contain it at 24 inches. Now right next to it, I need to create a horizontal line on the origin, and it should be approximately 18 inches from the origin, but a dimension is not required. So basically, they just want you to have something, and they said put it right on the origin, which I find to be complicated and difficult. So I'm actually just going to draw a straight line over here and right click done. It's on, the, it's parallel to the origin, which should work out fine. In this case, I am going to dimension it, even though they say you don't have to, only so that I can find it later and I'm going to make it about 24 inches. And then I am going to zoom out at this point so I can kind of see where I am. And I do want to come zoom in, so I'm going to grab my little hand and I'm going to come down here and zoom in, mostly just because I want to see it up closer than I had it. So now the next step is to create two concentric circles on the end of the horizontal line. So it doesn't really matter if it's on the end of the horizontal line, but I need two concentric circles. So I'm making two circles. And right now they don't look concentric or anything else, but that's okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to zoom out. I'm now going to come up here. You see this button that says concentric constraint. What it does is it makes two circles match up and have the same center point. So I'm matching that circle with this circle. They're now two concentric circles. They're the wrong size, but that's not the problem at the moment. So at this point, I'm going to take this, pull it down so it lines up on my line, and it's all nice and cutting it in half and everything else. Now, I'm going to dimension the circles. It says the outside one needs to be 24 inches. So I'm going to turn that into a 24 inch circle. And the inside one needs to be 22 inches. So I'm now going to change that into 22 inches. Now to see it, I'm going to have to zoom back out. There you go. And you can notice it's not where I want it to be. <laughs> by any means. So it says click the vertical line and click center line. Well first off I can't have them touching. So I need to grab the center point of these two circles which are now stuck together. And oh, right click done to get out of my dimensioning. Then I'm going to grab that center line and drag it. And I'm dragging it over to here. And I'm now going to try and get this line to cut across the center of the circle. And you're going to say, well how can you tell? Well, the way I can tell, let's see, no, nope, I have to grab a center here to move this. So I'm just kind of moving it up because I'm going to zoom in and I can see that this line does match up on the center. My problem is, is the line doesn't cut all the way across my circle, which is fine. It doesn't actually need to at this, it needs to cut all the way across, but it just needs to cut across. It doesn't need to be any specific length. So I'm just changing it to be a length that makes it cut across. It doesn't really matter what it is. So now I can click there. I can be all finished with that. I've zoomed out a little bit so I can see the whole thing. Now I'm on to step seven. It says click the vertical line and then click on center line. So there's my vertical line. Up here is center line. I click it and notice it changes it to make it a long dash, short dash line. Great. And then it says click on the horizontal line and click on construction line. Now I'm going to click uh, here and turn that into a construction line so that it's now got all small dashes, which I will actually have to change later to get this to work correctly. So it says dimension the outer circle to the center line at 36 inches. And that is step number nine. So I hit dimension, outer circle, to the center line and pull down and it says, hey, that's 48. 
because the center, no. I want a 36, which brings it in closer. And it's still making this my center line, which is what I want. Then it says create a reference line through the center line and the diameter of the circle. So I need to draw a line that cuts through the center line and the diameter of the circle. Well, I find that to kind of be a pain in the butt. So I'm going to hit done, and I'm actually going to grab this and just use the same line that I already created. And I'm going to drag it down this way and see it's, it's off a little. So what I'm going to do is come here, click this line, unconstruction line it, and then I just need to make this line a little bigger. And so what I'm going to do is actually take this dimension and I'm going to make it 92. And it's just stretching it out, right? Except that what I'm going to do is slide it. And notice when I slide up and down, it moves the circle up and down because they're all stuck together. But I need it to touch that line. So let's come back and I'm going to zoom in and make sure that my line is right on the end right there. Okay, so there we go, and I've zoomed back out. I just use my little scrolly wheel on my mouse to zoom in and out. So I'm going to grab my hand here and move it around to center this, zoom in just a hair so I can see it a little better, and then I can be done with that. So that says trim the curve. Well, what I'm going to do is by drawing this line through the middle, and I just took this, the line that was already there, turned it from a construction back to a regular, and made it bigger. That's perfectly fine, you can do the same thing. All you're really doing is cutting this, this circle in half so I can cut out these circle pieces. So again, what I did was I just clicked on the trim tool and then I cut out the pieces I don't want. And it says, hey, you gotta cut out the parts of the line you don't want too, which is fine. I'm now cutting out all the parts of the line that are not related to what I'm doing. Okay, well, fine. It doesn't want to cut that out because I've already dimensioned it to a length, which I can then, I can take this dimension and delete it, and now I can go back and I can trim out that line, and it's gone. And so now I just have the line and these half circles, right? So right click done, and that was step 11, was all that trimming. And then we're going to finish the sketch. Okay. So we have finished our sketch, and now we are going to go to Select Coil. This is the easy part, believe it or not. I tell it, yes, I want to select just that part there, just the, that part that I already clicked that's now blue. Then I'm going to come over here, click Axis, and I want to tell it that that is the axis that I want right there. And then OK. Whoop, oh, I can't hit OK yet because I have to tell it how big to make it. So I clicked axis and then the center line and now I'm going to click on coil size and I want it to be revolution and height and I need it to have three revolutions in it and I need it to be 132 inches high so it's actually a slide and then if the coil wraps up instead of down because of I don't know some bizarre thing then you would just come back to coil shape and you would just tell it to go the other direction by clicking the arrows here you would just tell it instead of going one way to go the other see now it's going up now it's going down you want it to go down and now that we're done we can just hit OK and what I have is now a coil slide. So I can come over here and I can move my hand around so you can see it a little bit better. I can now select it. I'm going to right click down on my, my hand here. I can select this. I can come over here to material and I can select a material to make this out of probably, we don't make slides out of carpet generally. Um, you can make it out of lead or we could make it gold if we wanted to. And so it looks kind of funny now, but when I uncheck, notice it looks like now it's gold. And so I can zoom out and what you're going to see, let me move my hand here so I can see it, is that's your slide which you are now going to be able to attach for your playground. So then all you do is save it, make sure it's saved to your file, and you've got your spiral slide.